Sir, uh, in India, there is a two, three laws, two laws. One is a reservation, giving uh, in education and professions. There is another one, SCST Atrocity Act, which is pro protecting Prevention of Atrocity Act. So there are these two things. So that your anti-caste legislation, is it a very different one from these two? How do you see this? Mm. Uh, yes, it is different. It is not so much. It is different in the sense there is no untouchability there. Because as I said to you, I am more handsome than the so-called Brahman, right? So, but there is a, the, the, the law says there, if anybody will discriminate with someone on the basis of caste, so the untouchability don't come into it. Even the reservation does not come into it. It is only that somebody, if uh, say I am working in the company, it's an English company, American company, never mind what company, but my manager is a high caste from here, if he is discriminating with me on the basis of caste, he will be prosecuted. There will be an no. inquiry committee and they will prosecute him. They will prosecute. So that basically this is to say that uh, all of you are eligible in the sense it is, it is all of you are eligible to go to higher studies or work in a profession, everything capable. Only due to your caste they discriminate you. Am I right? We are living in what we call here heaven. I was a 15-year-old boy, left school, went there. After I worked in one Canadian company for five years, I was only a warehouse man because I was soldier of Baba Sahib, Dr. Medka. I can speak for my right. When the management saw me, because I was a union leader, when they saw me sitting on the other, on the table, the other side, giving them a hard time, so they thought, why don't we make him to join us? rather than fighting with us, he will work with us. So they gave me the chance to become a supervisor. Where people in that company were working 10 years, 15 years more than me. In education, they were working in Delhi, in some department, they were much more than me. But they choose me to be a supervisor. They are very, how I can say, very, they are, they are justified people. They will not discriminate with, uh, 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 like that. If you look at discrimination, there, there will be discrimination. I'm not saying 100%. Even a father discriminates with children. I'll give you an example if you've got two sons. When you come from work, one son come and ask you, Papa, how are you? You want water? They send that. The other son just watching TV there. He said, Hello, Dad. Hello. So it is, if you got one something, one sweet, who are you going to give? You are going to call that son who is very close. Son, come. You will give him the sweet. So you are discriminated. But it should be to the level discrimination going on in India on the name of religion. In, the, in, in, in England, we get equal opportunity by the British. We are only talking where there is a control in Indian people's homes. In Indian people, whether they are many, where they are, they discriminate. If they will find there, then they will be prosecuted. It, uh, in there, it can be proved easy. If I am working in a place uh, 10 years and you started two years ago, all every people surrounding us know how brainy I am, how clever I am, and they promote you, then they have no chance. So uh, it is only within the Indian British don't do that. British will discriminate as Indian. If there are 10 people, uh, British, uh, well, white people you can call them, or European people, and there are two Indian, of course they are going to give the job out of those 10 first. But we are talking about Indian within Indian on the basis of caste. How much, uh, what will be the population of uh, upper castes in UK? Uh, like here, very minority. Brahman are three and a half percent in, and this, they, in India, and they are holding all prominent positions, 70%. You look at the judges in India, high, yeah. high court judges, Brahman, only three and a half percent. Look at the governors of all the states, yeah. Brahman, 70 percent. 
you take the record ever since India got independent, majority the time 99% Brahman, yeah. presidents Brahman, why? <coughs> are they only born with brain? It has been approved that we are more brainy than them. When it came to make the constitution, only Baba Sahib could make that. Where were all the learned Brahmins? They have only done damage to this country because it's our country, it's our blood. Only we are loyal, loyal, loyal to this country. And uh, one more thing we heard is uh, Gandhi. There was a street was to be named on after Gandhi in London, and there was a big protest. And uh, that yes, uh, they are not in the uh, United Kingdom. It was in the USA. USA. Okay, USA. Uh, they were going to name one street after Gandhi. But uh, Medical soldier got up and uh, um, <laughs> done Halla Gulla, they stopped. <laughs> because um, even the, the foreigner people are coming to realize how brainy this so-called Mr. Gandhi was. Okay. I only give one example. I have nothing against the Muslim. They are my brothers. Because one professor in London School of Economic Professor, Arif, it is his statement. He said, in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in India, 95% Muslim are converted Muslim. Dalit. Now who will convert to Muslim? Only my people. Brahman will never convert. Mm -hmm. So I have nothing against the Muslim. They are my brothers. They are converted. Who was the sixth Prime Minister of Pakistan? You don't know. I tell you. Mm -hmm. Sohra Devdi. Now, Virdi is talking to you. Sixth Prime Minister of Pakistan was Sohra Virdi, one of my forefathers. I have nothing. They converted to Islam. He became a Prime Minister. I am still struggling and fighting with these people. They don't recognize me. But he became a Muslim. He became a Prime Minister. So, Muslims are my brother. But I want to ask, tell one thing to Indian nation. It is Gandhi's fault in this country, if there will be ever civil war again, like 1947, between the Muslim and non-Muslim, Gandhi is the one to be blamed. Why? But you read the book of Baba Sahib, Dr. Dr. Medkar, Partition of India or Pakistan. Baba Sahib has suggested in that book that every single Muslim should be sent to Pakistan. Not with the hatred. They ask for separate country, Islamic country, give them Islam, Islam country, they got Islam country, Send them there. But what did Gandhi say? Hindu Muslim bhai bhai, wherever Hindu, uh, Muslim is sitting, they should sit there. Now, after the independent of India in 1951, the census was <coughs> done, they were only half percent of the population. Now, in uh, 2001, they are nearly 18 percent of the population. 2011 uh, figure hasn't come out yet. It got to be 22, 20%. So what is going to be after 20 years? When the separation took place, it was 27% Muslim. So now, isn't it possible that when they will reach to that figure, once again they can say, we are not treated equally in India. We want separate country. Now they can even go to United Nations to say, look, this is how we are discriminated. We want separate country. So who should we thank? For that, Mr. Gandhi. So, Gandhi is a great person, but I only tell you his one achievement, which is going to, which will push India into trouble, into civil war, once again. India will see it. So, thanks a lot.